Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished completing the main story of Lego Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. For a lot of my game reviews, I tend to 100% uh, the game's achievements before I make the review, but this one I'm undecided on. I originally played it with the intent of 100%ing it, but I'm honestly not having a super fun time with it. Um, and the, uh, the the post-story grind is about 90 plus hours worth of menial tasks and repetitive stuff. So I don't really know if I want to do that. I haven't decided yet. So we're just going to do my review now. And I have this notebook here because I'm going to be ranking what I felt were the uh, lows and highs. I'm going to rank all the episodes of content in this. So yeah, before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. So it took me 15 hours to... Uh, complete this game and then I delved into a little bit of free play content just for the sake of the review so I do have my opinion formed already I highly doubt 90 more hours of menial children's content is going to improve my score whatsoever if anything is just gonna drop it so I'm just gonna go ahead and make my review now so this game this is kind of the final Lego Star Wars game in the near future. It is supposed to be the ultimate saga um, and it's basically a scene for scene replication of every single major scene in the Star Wars films excluding Rogue One and Solo. So it's there's a lot here right although 15 hours I guess isn't that long but I guess for a Lego game that is kind of long um, but uh, yeah I was never really into Lego games but this one I mean, not only do I love... Okay, so Lego Star Wars specifically I liked. I was never into, like, Lego Hobbit and other games like that I've tried. Lego Harry Potter wasn't really for me either. But I did always love Lego Original Trilogy. I mean, who didn't? And I did always love Lego uh, Clone Wars. It, I, I enjoyed that as well because it was based off the TV series as well, which I did, which I love. So I had a very good opinion of Lego Star Wars in the past. And this one kind of goes in a different direction, but not really just because... It's just because it's modern era now, right? It's not only are we not kids anymore, so it's just not that fun. It was not as fun. But since the characters are voice acted now, it's just not charming or endearing. The level design here is way different from the original games as well. Um, in the original games, it boasted exploration, and there was like reasons to go and do stuff. Here, it's just a bunch of open kind of... I mean, that... I mean, yes, the levels are open, but it's actually very linear. There's always a quest marker telling you where to go at all times. Like, you literally do not get to, like, forge your own path in this at all. It is, there's always a marker telling you where to go. So, I rarely explored the levels because there was always a marker and there's a sprint button. They straight up added sprinting to a Lego button. So, even more reason to just kind of beeline it through the story. Um, but even if you did try and explore... This is probably like this in the old games as well, but it felt worse here. Um, you know, even if you do explore, half the content's going to be locked until free play anyway. And if even if you do complete collect some mini kits, you're not going to be able to get the ships or the characters because you're going to need all five mini kits. So, you know, usually you can only get like two or three out of five in a story level, so you won't even be rewarded for that. So what's even the point, right? There's no point in exploring. Um, and if you do explore some of the more open levels, they're just open, empty spaces. Um, occasionally you'll have an NPC or two to talk to with really poor voice actors. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. The game's not all trash. So let's start with the positives. So, basically, if you're wondering what the plot is, it's just, you, you literally go through episodes one to nine, uh, and it's a scene-for-scene scene recreation, extremely faithful. Um, occasionally they will make a joke out of a scene or two, so it's not like 100% accurate, but for the most part it is quite accurate. Even the dialogue they say is pretty close. Um, but yeah, so what are the strengths about the game? Well, the character variety is fantastic. There's obviously a ton of content here. If you're like under 12 years old, you're probably going to be hooked to this for several hundreds of hours. I'm sure there's just an infinite amount of things for you to do at that point. Um, yeah, it's uh, obviously very nostalgic. It's got the right music in it. Um, it's very impressive how they've kind of one for one recreated many of these scenes and basically just transformed the world of Star Wars into Lego seamlessly. It's a beautiful looking game. This is like, this is a PS5 title. This is 
like one of the most gorgeous looking games I've played and it's literally a Lego game so I did not expect that at all. Uh, there's a huge amount of costumes by the way, it's not like a game where there's like, well there probably is but you don't need to, there's, um, you don't need to like go buy a bunch of microtransaction costumes and stuff, you can switch between all of your favorite characters outfits from the various films at your disposal. Um, I liked that uh, each character type was kind of labeled and they had sort of like different skill sets like the scavengers were my favorite because they could create a bunch of different tools to help you uh, go against the level. The protocol droids like C-3PO can translate alien languages. Um, the astromech droids interact with puzzles. You've got obviously the Jedi can force move the objects around. The bounty hunters can take specific missions from specific kill from specific um, characters, and they also get more studs for killing enemies. There's a lot of little stuff like that that I did think was cool. Um, and while I personally don't think the combat system needs to be this advanced, I will mention that this is by far the most uh, this is the most advanced uh, combat system that Lego game has ever received. Unless maybe like I don't know, I haven't played Lego Batman a lot. I've played like Lego DC Super Villains, I think. So I imagine maybe a new Lego Batman uh, game could have like a bunch of gadgets and stuff. But this is in-depth combat, like really in-depth. There's straight up like like rolling Dark Souls style. Obviously, there's throwing lightsabers. There's a ton of special moves, unique animations for every single character. So it's uh, it's a polished game. That's like the number one thing I can say about it. Um, but as far as negatives go, and why my taste a little bit bitter. First of all, LEGO games to me have always been charming and even funny sometimes. This game does not have a single ounce of charm or, or uh, charisma or any sort of laughs whatsoever. I did not laugh a single time in my 15 hours of playing this game. That is pretty sad. Uh, the Star Wars movies, um, so your argument for that would be that it's, it's for kids, right? It's child humor. Well, the Star Wars movies were also for kind of family included, right? Family humor. And they are funny. The Star Wars films are absolutely funny. They have charming, clever dialogue that's, uh, you know, delivered really well. But here they pick a bunch of no-named voice actors. Um, like, I think maybe occasionally here and there they used original voices. Like, I think I maybe heard James Earl Jones a few times for some of the cinematics. Maybe that's just someone really copying him, but... Most of the voice actors in this were no-name nobodies. Like the uh, episode 2 Anakin Skywalker sounds nothing like Hayden, it sounds nothing like the Clone Wars animated version, what's his name, Matt Lanter, Taylor, or something like that. Um, so it's just some no-name nobody that delivers lines as poorly as possible. All the NPCs, yeah. So I had a huge problem with the voice acting. Uh, for the sequel trilogy, I straight up played the sequel trilogy muted. I had subtitles on so I still knew what the dialogue was because I still want to criticize that. But for the record, it was so bad that I straight up played the sequel trilogy muted because I was just so tired of it at that point. There are lame jokes that don't land at all. Um, another topic, another thing on the topic of dialogue and uh, jokes. So, the sequel trilogy, I would have respected this game more if it had some more self-aware humor. There was a little bit. Uh, like, we got the blue milk with Luke. I think the game was playing with that a bit. And we also had one of the names of the levels was uh, They Fly Now. So there was a few self-aware jokes. But I didn't like that the sequel trilogy was cr lean crutching on prequel memes humor so much. Like, they were, they were replacing original bad dialogue from the uh, sequel trilogy movies with prequel memes. Like, Anakin will say, I don't like sand during the final climax between Rey and her grandpa, right? Her uncle or whatever. So, like, Palpatine. So, I, I did not like that because it's it gives me that feeling of, like, the people who are writing this are like, Oh, I'm cool. I'm hip like the kids. I'm a prequel memer. No, you're not. You're, you're corporate little... You know, you're working for the corporate XX. You're working at Disney. Uh, don't, don't pretend like you're one of us. You're not a prequel memer. Don't do those jokes. Try and find your own unique humor. Um, yeah, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the actual specific... Oh, apparently... What did I do? Apparently I wrote like a fan fiction or something. I have not looked at this journal forever. Okay, so first of all, here is my ranking worst to best of the films, not including Rogue One and Solo. So, the worst film is The Phantom Menace, followed by Attack of the Clones, The Last Jedi, Return of the Jedi, uh, Rise of Skywalker, Revenge of the Sith, A New Hope, The Force Awakens, Empire Strikes Back. 
That is the actual films themselves. Here's what I felt about the Lego episodes themselves as far as gameplay and just sort of flow and enjoyment factor. So, the worst, the worst episode was actually The Last Jedi. I actually expected this one to be better, but no, The Last Jedi was terrible. Um, it sort of comes back to the humor. It's like, you know, they, they still told the Your Mama Hux joke at the very beginning. All the cringe dialogue was still there, just put on with a little bit of a Lego spin, I guess. So the story and narration of it was even worse than the film already was. Uh, and the gameplay was not that good anyway. Also, I felt this was the longest episode. Um, I think this was actually might be the long, no, maybe second longest film. So it was also the longest episode, and it was my least favorite one. So it was a painful to get through. Absolutely hated the last Jedi episode in this game. Next up, interestingly, is Empire Strikes Back. I know, I'm serious. So Empire Strikes Back was my number one best film. But, um, actually, I believe... Yes, okay, yes, it is, including Rogue One, it is. So, Empire Strikes Back is the second worst level in this. It was, it felt to me like the shortest. Uh, the gameplay was not very intuitive. And um, there was one sort of roadblock section at the beginning. Like, they do this a lot in this game, but it felt really bad here, where they'll take short scenes from the film and extend it majorly for gameplay purposes. Uh, when they were, when Han was on the little creature searching for Luke, that part was super drawn out, and that's just like a very quick thing that happens in the film. So, I, Empire Strikes Back was completely forgettable. I thought the Darth Vader kind of fight at the end was a little bit disappointing as well. Um, and they probably should have just used original dialogue. Having that actor just say, no, that's not true, it's impossible, in his cringe, terrible, like, Mark Hamill delivered it pretty cringely, but it's iconic, right? So I either would have just copied Mark Hamill, copy-pasted, or just did a different line entirely. I don't know. So, yeah, Empire Strikes Back was surprisingly disappointing and very short. I think it was the shortest one, if I had to guess. Uh, next up, we're going to have The Force Awakens. I don't have a lot to say about it. It just wasn't that interesting. Uh, gameplay wasn't that fun. I hated the Wrath Tar se section as well. Next up is going to be uh, Rise of Skywalker. Uh, same thing with Last Jedi. The story of Rise of Skywalker was already questionable in the film, but at least the film was J.J. Abrams directed and produced and had his like visual effects and badassery. But in Lego form, it's not badass. So it just took the terrible storyline of the film and gave me mediocre gameplay. I did not like it. Next up is The Phantom Menace. Uh, this was the first one I played. It wasn't that bad, but I felt like the levels were really hollow. The, like, Mos Eisley, there was literally no reason to go anywhere. It, it, it was just very hollow and empty to me. Um, next up is Revenge of the Sith. This was a little bit disappointing for me, but I, I loved the film so much. So I still had got some enjoyment out of it. Uh, the final battle between... Um, actually, most of the boss battles in this game are not very good. I think I only like the Darth Maul one, to be honest, and maybe the Return of the Jedi Darth Vader one. Um, but yeah, this, the boss battles are the reason I'm putting this here. I don't think they were very good at all. Uh, they were very linear and kind of, uh, on, um, what's that word? On rails. They were on rails. Okay, uh, next up. So the third best, these, this is where it gets good in my opinion. These top three are actually good levels and I actually had fun in. So number three is going to be A New Hope. It was very copycat of the original trilogy on the Game Boy one, and I'm glad it was because it was fun. I just, I liked everything about it. It was narratively, it was very good. The story progression made sense. Um, it was just very good in general. The second best one is Return of the Jedi. That is because it introduced us to the scavenger class. So we got to play as the Ewoks with their bows and their their nets and their grapple guns. I also love the vehicle combat when you get to go in ATST. I love the glider. So it was really fun as well. And it has a great space battle as well. Um, and we have the best one, the actual best one, which was the second worst film, but it is going to be the best here in their Lego. Attack of the Clones. Really interesting story and universe. A lot of locations, a lot of ground and space combat. The uh, factory scene, the Geonosian factory, was 10 out of 10. Um, and that makes sense because in the film, it kind of was like a, a kid's playset, right? In the film. But since we're actually playing a game now, it works so well. Literally every location from that film translates to game perfectly. 
So Attack of the Clones is going to be the best uh, episode, in my opinion, for this game. So yeah, I'm going to give Rise of, sorry, I'm going to give the Skywalker Saga a 5 out of 10. It is a beautiful looking, polished, nostalgia baiting game that has a weirdly in-depth combat system, but it just comes off a little bit hollow, extremely linear, and the post-game is atrocious. It's absolutely terrible. It's like World of Warcraft, Daily Quest, uh, repeatable crap that you're going to do over and over and over again. Like the game might say, oh, we have 20 different galaxies for you to explore. Well, they're all the same. It's just, you know, there's asteroid here, character to talk to here, shooting gallery here. It's the same mini games over and over again. So five out of 10, definitely not the worst game ever. I'm sure it's, well, actually it might be the worst Lego game, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I have not played all Lego games. There's a lot. There's like probably like over 50 LEGO games, so someone tell me if this is the worst one. This has the best combat and the best graphics, but it has the worst level design and gameplay.